Hi, folks. Uh, so we're building a big, crazy, futuristic carnival. Uh, we've literally reimagined the, uh, the carnival midway with lasers and fire and robots, and uh, we're taking that on the road. So uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very exciting thing. And you might ask yourself, well, why are we on stage at the Launch Education Conference? <laughs> uh, well, we have a secret agenda. We're basically using all this high-tech amusement to get kids excited about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So it's the STEAM carnival. And uh, we have a few demos we're going to show you on stage today. Uh, but first, uh, my co-founder Eric's going to talk through a bunch of our, uh, a bunch of our games. So you, you guys know what's at a carnival. It's awesome games, right? We are bringing awesome games unlike any you have ever seen. So uh, this is one we call Laser Asteroids. We've mounted a laser projector high over the ground and we're projecting. Remember that game Asteroids? We're projecting it on the ground. But this time, you're the ship. As you turn around in your chair and as you, you move around on the, the floor, the ship follows you and you're trying to blow up the asteroids. This is our giant ski ball. We call this the world's largest track ball. This track ball is as big as that kid is. He's using it to play our reimagined version of ski ball, a carnival classic. This is the pixel toss. Imagine, if you will, an army of kids all holding tennis balls in their hands, throwing them at the wall, right? But that wall isn't just an ordinary wall, it's a projection surface. And running on that projection surface is something a little bit like pinball. And every time a ball hits the wall, a virtual ball appears in that world, falls down the screen, and kids are using paddles to try and navigate that ball into proper target zones. This is our laser maze, where you actually have to duck and dive over lasers that you can see because we filled the room with smoke. Kids learn about, about reflection, they learn about lasers, and uh, and this is our robotic gantry crane robot. You know that, uh, you know that arcade, uh, that, the, the thing you find in the arcade, the, the claw gripper where you try and win a teddy bear? Right? That thing sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> I never win that. You know why? It's because they make it intentionally bad. We decided to make a six foot by three foot claw grabber game, which is deadly accurate. And you're going after targets that are actively evading you. Sphero robots that other people are controlling around the table. Right? And this thing, is so, this thing is so big and moves so fast, you don't get to touch it. You use a leap motion controller to drive it over the table. So it's all gesture controlled. Uh, so kids get to learn about robotics while having a great time. We've got 40, 40 of these games in the pipeline. And we're so excited to build them and bring them on the road. The, a, a few that we have coming down the pike, human pinball, uh, a, a dunk tank flambe, really, really excited to show you those things. <laughs> um, and, but the second half of the event is, uh, is an exhibition. It's a competition for kids uh, uh, to be able to showcase high-tech entertainment that they make. So we have a series of kits we've designed, uh, musical robots, wearable electronics, and a few others. Uh, and they basically get to bring an, uh, th those, uh, those kits, their creations, and exhibit them on stage. So you get a bunch of kids with musical robot projects, you put them on stage, well, that's a concert. You get a bunch of uh, kids with uh, wearable electronics projects, you put that on stage, that's a fashion show. We wanted all of the kits to be both STEAM related as well as entertaining. So even if you and, and uh, your friends had arrived at the carnival and, and uh, didn't have kids actually on stage, it was still going to be a fun thing for you to watch. Um, we uh, uh, have a... Uh, uh, Exciting announcement today. We're launching our the pre-sales for our very first kit, the Musical Robot Kit. Uh, this is it uh, out of the box, and uh, this is it uh, uh, actually created right here. Um, we have a, a quick right, video. Today we're going to be learning about building robots using our Musical Robot Kit. Hi, my name is Hillary Ortega, I'm 14 years old. My name is Jeff Romarenko, I'm 15 years old. My name is Bridget Agas, I am 14 years old. Make your own Musical Robot. At first, I began, you know, knowing basic stuff. I thought that it was hard, and I thought that it's like I couldn't do it. But now that I have the tools, I feel better about doing robotics, and it gives me that kind of confidence. I know now how to build robots in a different way than I used to think, because now I have a better perspective of how I can make them work. We could just actually do the projects ourselves, so we can experiment and create you know, the objects. One way is not the only way. So it works. Nice. Most definitely this is a building block for me to continue building. Our musical robot. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. Nice job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Um, 
Great. So we've got a, uh, a bunch of, of, of awesome traction so far. Uh, we raised $100,000 on Kickstarter. Uh, we, were, uh, we were fortunate enough to present uh, on stage this year at, at All Things Digital. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of, of uh, uh, great partners lined up. I mean, people, uh, uh, cities uh, have reached out from all over the world, all over the country, uh, uh, wanting us to bring the carnival to their town. Um, we've got, uh, so we signed our first corporate sponsors, uh, GE and Spark Fun. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're actually looking for a few more, so I would love to chat with anybody about that if you have ideas. Um, and uh, the, the, actually, the kids in that video are from Will I Am's Foundation. Foundation. That's actually just right down the street from us, and uh, so we're collaborating with them and uh, and, and the Bo and uh, uh, the, the kids at the Boyle Heights School um, to, as as our kind of earliest test subjects. But we have some uh, schools already lined up in Los Angeles. Um, we're going to be bringing this to uh, San Francisco next year. Uh, we, right now, we've committed to Los Angeles and San Francisco, but we're going to uh, we're going to go uh, uh, further than that. And um, we there's a few things we need. Uh, we've got a uh, we would love to get in touch with a C level executive with uh, curriculum development experience. Um, we're uh, uh, interested in foundations that care about STEM and STEAM and uh, uh, any CMOs, high-tech companies, uh, uh, whatnot, that would like to be affiliated with an event like this. Uh, we're looking for a title sponsor and, and uh, have a couple of other opportunities for them that we think would be really exciting. And we'd love you to talk about it. Put, the, put this out on your Twitters and, and uh, let your friends know. Uh, it's going to be a blast. Bring your family, bring your friends, um, and uh, we hope to see you there. All right. So if it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't clear from the get-go, uh, this is the first example of the musical robot kit. This is sort of the initial model right here in the middle. There are add-ons. Why am I talking? You want to see some music? You want us to make some music with some robots? <laughs> Let's make some music with some robots. <laughs> we had kids from Will I Am's Foundation, as you saw in the video, help us design and build pieces of this robot. And, uh, Jason, are, are, we the, are we the only presenters to be using an air compressor on stage today? Yes, yes. yes. Just making sure. Uh, you know, I should the have judges added, are we, full we, of hot air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's one other thing we need. We do actually need a real music composer. Uh, roboticists should not be making music. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Steam Carnival. And so, just to ask him, Precursor question here: Is this a business or is it a nonprofit? What is it exactly? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so we really uh, believe that the company of the future is a nonprofit and a for-profit combination of those, right? That the consumers will expect a kind of Tom's Shoes style model to uh, 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 okay. for the world. And so there's aspects of this that are for-profit, owned IP, and aspects of it that are that are nonprofit. Is the kit? Owned IP, the kid is owned IP, for profit, for profit. and the carnival is the nonprofit. No, the carnival is also a profitable portion. Okay. The, the community outreach of, of distributing these kits to at-risk kids oh, okay. uh, is Great. that's all the nonprofit. Portion. Okay, so this is Steam Carnival and Steam Kits. We should think of like Ringling Brothers or Cirque du Soleil for amusement. Cirque du Soleil, perfect. Yeah. Which actually makes a lot of money. Are you going to franchise the yeah. carnival part of this because I? I'd love to have this as a kid's birthday party or something like that, <laughs> instead of the stupid blow-up house that yeah, you usually get. Yeah, so I'm really glad to hear you say that. So we've actually got a running business of bringing a bunch of this uh, entertainment to uh, conferences, events, uh, uh, mitzvahs, parties. You know, we, we've been doing that for parties. years. Yeah, so we've been building high-tech, you know, installing hotels, all that kind of stuff. Could you actually just give us a little more background on that? I mean, like, how long have you guys been doing this? And do you, is there more than just two of you? And, do you, and how many you years have you been to cash flow positive at this point? <laughs> just, just, a, just a little bit more detail so we can kind of put you in context to be great. Sure, and, sure. And pricing and stuff like that. Great. So first things first, Brent and I have been building, uh, at first, art and then eventually games together for five or six years now. Okay. Uh, this is now our, our third company together. We, yeah. We're makers. We build stuff. And we've been doing it for a long time. And yeah. there it is. And uh, over time, we discovered that the things that we gained the most enjoyment from making and showing off to others were games and entertainment. So that's how our business has evolved. OK, but right now, your business is the two of you, or? Oh, no, oh, no. sorry. There's a, there's a bunch of There's about 25 of us. Uh, we'll do, we'll do yeah. about 4 million bucks this year. 
Oh, okay. So you've got a four what? million dollar. Yeah. That's, okay. a that, that's a little bit more detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more detail. <laughs> okay, so your cash flow positive. You got a four million dollar run rate. And to Esther's question, can you talk a little bit about the pricing of your kits and uh, how much how much of revenue is coming from the carnival and how much is coming from the kits? So the the uh, the, the the kits themselves are uh, right now we're t they're about one hundred nineteen bucks. We're trying to get them to a ninety nine, um, and then there's add on components that are nineteen ninety nine. Um, and so, to do my birthday party next month, how much? It uh, depends on how many games you want, uh, but we have a whole so slate give, of them. Uh, you know, anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand bucks, depending on the the install and where where we where we'd go. And so somebody shows up with stuff at my place and sets yep. it up. Brings a toy hauler with you know a bunch mm -hmm. of bunch of high tech games, and we've got uh, we got a, a magic mirror that you know you can look at yourself in ASCII art and pointillism and uh, uh, you know funhouse mirror. We've got you know a lot of the stuff that we showed. We've got more, way more than than uh, we put in this presentation. Jason, this is wrong. Uh, education should be dull and boring. Apologize. <laughs> 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 We shouldn't be having fun here and saying good things about companies that come up here. We should be beating the crap out of them. <laughs> How dare you make education interesting and fascinating? So talk a little bit then. So you're at a $4 million run rate. You get 25 people. You're doing parties and bar mitzvahs and stuff. So what do you, what do you actually see yourselves trying to become in, say, two years' time? Are you really trying to push more of the kits? Are you trying to push the activities? I mean, describe where you think you're going. Yeah, so you know, the, the intersection of education and amusement is a really exciting one for us, right? Because the, the same type of stuff that we use to make all our games is the same stuff that ends up in the kids, right? And so for us, you, you say the word education and you instantly lose a kid's attention. Right? But did you say lasers, fire, and robots? You've got their undivided attention, right? And so for us, the, uh, you know, we, we love the idea of, of, of Cirque du Soleil for amusement, something that would be a fixed installation in Vegas and, and you know, st you know, sets of our games in Orlando and New York and Las Vegas, so kind of ready for all of the different conferences and events and, and, and parties and those uh, uh, demos. Um, but, uh, the, the, uh, uh, you know, and then deploying of the educational portion of this to schools so that it's like an after-school program. The, the carnival tours around. The kids are building their own projects. And then as the carnival arrives in various places, they get to exhibit their stuff on stage. Yes. Um, so two, two things. One, as judges, we don't really know what we're supposed to be judging, what the criteria right. are. Right. Just give feedback. But, but, Hairstyle. Okay. So in the previous one with the, <laughs> the dollhouse, there's some discussion of, you know, creating richer narrative and branding and all this kind of stuff and how successful Angry Birds was. Yeah. But honestly, some of the best things for kids, my brother and I used to spend days playing with a faucet and some mud. Yeah. And we had, we made ourselves into dragons with mud scales and we had fights and we launched <laughs> attacks on, there's a landslide nearby. So to some extent, I think the more you leave to the kid, the better. And I'm, I'm curious, how, how uh, modular, how yes, object oriented are you? Thank you for bringing that up. You? Okay, so we uh, are drawing a lot of inspiration from video games, right? And so, you, so the best video games have no instruction manual, right? And you basically it levels up with your capability. You don't go to level two with Super Mario Brothers without passing level one, right? And so for us, the the initial out of the box, it's it's straight assembly, just like Legos. You're making the thing on the box. But then we have a, a, a series of kind of small incremental steps where now you can change the music a little bit. You can change the, the uh, uh, you down, uh, 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 pull little aspects of it that you can add on so that it starts to get you more and more comfortable with the real maker tools. And we, eventually by the end of the day, you're raiding the kitchen drawers for spoons and forks and you're adding them to your robot because you know there are things around the house you can use to make music. And so a, a, a portion of this that I didn't mention is the, the, the online community where kids can share the videos of the stuff they're doing, look, you know, grab other laser cut designs from what other people have done. Get, Did you, you know, mention the cost of this music kit yet? Uh, yeah, 119. 119. 119. Yeah. So it's not cheap. It's not cheap. We're not trying yet. to get it to 99 uh, and, and experimenting with that. So. And this is going to be kickstarted or no? Um, this, the, the, uh, as part of the Kickstarter, we pre-sold some kits. Ah. Yeah. So the kit was part of the pre, because you, you also did the tickets to the carnival. Kids, tickets to the carnival and the, and the sale of the kits. Now, these were all made with the same kit, or is this, because these, these are, seem like this is a wood instrument and those are flutes, the, yeah, this, or so, a wind a, instrument. A couple of, this is the one that's shipping. These, Got it. these are experiments. You think about making music, right? You're banging on something, you're plucking something, and you're running air through something. And right. so these were our, our original experiments in those. Uh, ah, got it. Uh, and there's a GoPro on this one, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's for us. Got it. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, it, you know, it, before the panel started, Esther and I were talking, or, or I think it was Esther, and we said, it was, it was. I, well, there's two which, Esther, which one? so I have to keep track of which Esther it was. Uh, we have but, the most oh, Esther per judging panel but, of any conference. <laughs> <laughs> Before the pen, and we were talking about what, what are we really looking for if we were really investing? We're looking for people who are building companies, not products. And this is a great example of this. I, I have no idea where you guys are going for the next three years, but I can. I got to cut my friend off over here. You know, this, we say bullshit we keep hearing about 10 to X, 20 X returns, complete nonsense. This is why the venture capital system is in major decline. Build great lifestyle businesses. Yeah. Businesses like what you're building, where you have fun, where you believe in it, where you do good, and you make enough profit to, to pay for your okay. salaries, look after your families. This Silicon Valley mindset of having to have everything go explosive and, and build big money Vivek. is completely so misguided. No, no. Right? You know, you're misguided. <laughs> you're no, misguided. I'm not misguided. Wait, 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 wait. We're not asking them how much money they're going to make. We're asking them how are they going to be sustainable. This is sustainable. Well, this I don't is know. entirely I mean, sustainable. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Twenty-five people making four million dollars. You don't know. But the sales guy is is about to go nuts. Their their team is unhappy. I mean. <laughs> Seriously, it's important to understand. You want to talk sustainable? <laughs> we've been doing this. We've been bootstrapping this stuff for yeah. years okay. without thinking of it as, as a business. And then when it became a business, well, all of a sudden money started coming in, and we're like, oh yeah, okay. Right. This thing we've been doing for free for years, oh yeah, totally sustainable. So this is why okay. that's the way a company should be built. But now you want to be but, uh, venture backed. You want to be investor backed, and you want to have a hundred kits in 10 different languages. We, yeah. Yeah. You know, so we, we watch haven't... out that you get an investor, seriously, who understands your mission, yes. which may not be 10 times. It may be, like I'm on the board of the meetup. Our mission is very different from the mission of Twitter. And yeah. it, you need the right kind of investors. I, I totally agree. I mean, We've that, been very careful. We've that, taken no investment yet. Yeah, it's a real question. You've got $4 million of revenue with 25 people. Why, are you, why would you want venture investment? Uh, we uh, would like to be able to scale this up faster. Just run more carnivals. Beware what you wish for. <laughs> well, I mean, Beware it what does you feel wish like I, the Steam Carnival brand of toys, I could see having like a row in Toys R Us. Like, it feels like this could be the row that parents feel the best about going to in the toy store. Like, let's go to that row and start there, and let's end on the Disney it, row, you know? Well, I was thinking of doing If we uh, even get there. I, I was, you know, if we sat down and, and had a beer, I'd love to explore a retail space where you guys take your passion for creating things, making things, and then, you know, of course I'm going to walk Microsoft out with two kids. The Microsoft store. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, pop-up store, too. I mean, people are... No, you, there's, there's stores that you go in with your kids and you make a pottery, right? And there's yeah. stores you go in and make a teddy yeah. bit, right? Or I, a petting zoo. Why is there like not one of those? Sort of like a petting circus. You know, sadly, the chances of you getting venture capital circus. are zilch, yeah. because, <laughs> because that's the way the venture capital community is. They're obsessed yeah. with this 10 to 20 thing. They say that's why they're in the toilet. Hundred you, yeah. Yeah, This is why 20. you have to keep your vision. Uh, figure out how to bootstrap, come up with some ideas, commercialize a few of those products, and, and then you, when you have those products, you try to get the venture capital for them, which, because those will go exponential, but at this stage, your likelihood of getting funding is low, but it doesn't matter. I think the likelihood Ultimately, what you're doing is good. Business. I think right. the likelihood of getting a solid angel round with this yeah. is high. Ah, uh, because if you're dealing you with smart people. It. Right. No, no, if you, you can show a clear man. product yeah. path. I guarantee you there's a few investors who have a lot of money in their pockets going to Burning Man in August or September, whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> and those are the investors you want because they exactly. will get this concept immediately. They may right? forget to invest. Yeah. Don't go people. to the... <laughs> <laughs> in fairness. Don't go near Sand Hill Road, whatever you do. Stay away from Sand Hill, you'll be fine. There's burners on Sand Hill Road. You just got to find the right ones. I don't know about that. I don't know. Not those guys. What do you think? I mean, you have a fund, you angel invest. I mean, what would, what would this need to, I mean, obviously there's a lot of conversations here, but do you think a, a toy company making these sort of kits and projects could eventually garner investment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd seriously, I'd go after people who were parents, which is a pretty large set of people who, who get this. I mean, your, your best investors are always people who are aligned with your mission. And I'd be careful not to get too many because they're just hard to manage. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the, the other thing is, is absolutely right. One or two products that can go get a nice return and then a very careful governance document that says which part is for profit, which part is not for profit, how you allocate your time and money. Yeah. And uh, then start the, the Steam Carnival Roadshow. And, uh, 
What I like about this too as a brand is you have this marketing effort of the carnival, which is profitable as a carnival, that is a huge commercial for the products. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah, monetized they get to market their products. Yeah. Yeah. There's zero Every marketing birthday budget. party is, is like Mary Kay. Except mm -hmm. Well, th this is why I would, <laughs> this is why I'd like to explore a retail space if I had some a couple hours with you because I think there's some scale in the entertainment experience. Not coming to Esther's backyard, but having Esther's family come to your retail experience because then it's loud, like cloud computing. You're you're chopping up the costs of the business and you're making it more scalable. I would love that. And you know, Dang, a couple of hours, by the way, get him in, get that from him in writing and go and meet him. I mean, <laughs> All right, yeah, let's hear really uh, You know, part of our thesis is out of home amusement is totally broken, you yeah. know, and you know, it hasn't changed since laser tag. And, uh, and, so and there's for really, those people who were here last year, Brent's dad, Nolan Bushnell was the fireside chat. Were you here last year? I wasn't here. Last year. So your dad was the fireside chat, obviously the founder of Atari. So uh, you learned a, a lot from him about gaming? I had a terrible childhood. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you literally had every Atari cartridge in your house? Well, yeah, although we never played Atari. He was always bringing home the other games. So we were playing you know, Nintendo and Famicom and all that. <laughs> he, he didn't just invent an Atari. He, he came up with Chuck E. Cheese's, which oh, is yeah, a yeah, retail Chuck place. Cheese, yeah. You go and get crappy yeah. pizza, but it had all these great <laughs> 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 All right, let's hear it for Steam Carnival. Well done. Next up.